The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you have markets in positive territory yet again to kick things off. How about 49.24 this morning on the S&Ps? We're trading up by 24 points right now. We're up by half a percent, trading at 49.19. You jump over the NASDAQ 100, you're up by three quarters percent. You're, you're less than 2% right now, about away from 18,000 in the NASDAQ 100. We're up 134 points right now, three quarters percent, trading at 17,666. The Dow up by about 128 points, three tenths percent in the positive, 38,217. And the Russell continued volatility right back at the highs of yesterday. The Russell up by 24 points, 1.2% to the upside, 2013. We jump over to Bitcoin, talk about an acceleration yesterday, saving itself a bit. We're back at about 40000 on Bitcoin, up $600. Crude, just chopping around. Uh, crude, right near $75, bucks, seventy four ninety one. We're going to talk to Kevin Hinks after the first break, about 9.15. We'll talk to Kevin, as we always do, from the Schwab Network, Fast Market. We talk to our man Teddy Kegstad at 40 past the hour on Wednesdays. Always a good conversation. We got crude in focus uh, as usual, and yeah, just holding that 75 boundary. On the upside, we jump to gold contract, 2033. Quite the acceleration as gold pushes the upper boundary as well. That 2040 area from Friday, the highs of Tuesday, we make a high similar this morning. Gold up by almost $8 at 2033. Silver up by 52 pennies, up almost a dollar from where you were on Monday. $23, we'll call it for silver, up by right on the dot as we speak, up by 44, 54 cents for silver. And you jump to notes and bonds, and what do we got? We got a little bit of a reversal of the trend of what we saw yesterday, at least. Yesterday, you had lower price, higher yield. Today, we have higher price, lower yield. We're back to about 4.1%. We were approaching 4.15 yesterday. The 10-year, up by 10 ticks, 111.16. The 30 year this morning up by 22 ticks at 120.16. We jump over the dollar index. So we have a little bit of a weaker yield. And what does that do? I mean, just extreme volatility on the dollar, man. Dollar up to almost 104 yesterday. Today we have a 102 handle. You give up a full point in the dollar from 103.81 yesterday to 102.87 this morning as the dollar is off 75 pennies right now at 102. 87. That's some extreme weakness in the dollar. We'll take a look at the daily. And yeah, we had been talking about that the dollar was at the 382, right? We're talking about maybe a good time to take a look at that gold contract. And I'm going to be looking hard at that today, man, even after this program, because that is quite a decisive break. Yields haven't done anything dramatic in that time. And you might see, even in the face of yields that are not about to plummet, okay? We've been going from 4.15 to 4.1 today. There hasn't been any huge weakness for the dollar to give up almost a full point. You compare that to your 10-year, okay? There's no extreme break there. The dollar is showing weakness today. It's breaking away from that 3A2 area. And if you get that type of a rollover, man, be ready for a lot of things to matter, and commodities are going to matter for sure. You're seeing gold up about 8 bucks, and we'll see where gold goes today because that is quite a move. And what's interesting is, so we just did it, right? You got gold at basically a 3A2 of the pullback, okay? Uh, excuse me, I want to pull up the dollar. And then you pull up the dollar... And you're also at the 3A2 that you just broke away. So very inversely correlated, even to the point where you take those full accelerations, gold, the dollar, 3A2s, okay? They're trading inversely and very correlated, and you see the breakaway. And yeah, that should push gold to the upside, and I think that trend is going to continue going forward as you see some dollar weakness going forward, even in light of yields potentially not plummeting. 
Okay, they could pull back, but I think you're going to see some dollar weakness coming into things. We will find out. All right, where do we kick things off? Let's kick it off with a little bit of China. China, they're, they're trying, man. They're trying. If you watched the program yesterday, I was talking about when they have done this previously, okay, I think it was 2015 we were talking about yesterday, that they pumped $240 billion or something like that into the buying power for their stock market. All it was was a bear market rally that they sold into and traded lower within six months. China boosting stimulus by allowing banks to keep smaller reserves. All right, they lowered the reserve requirement ratio by 0.5 points on February 5th. Uh, now, what's remarkable is that even in my group chats, we're starting to talk about China. That's what I wanted to talk about, right? Um, you know, I used to love Basil's programs, and I still do, but when he was talking about, you know, at market highs, everybody's talking about it, nobody's talking about it, you know, he's going, he's playing tennis, everyone's talking about it, no, you're just getting that feel of who's talking about the market, is there over-exuberance, et cetera, right, that type of deal. And, you know, this is at a market low, of course, okay, but I'm trying to find, here we go, uh, this is... An example of what's getting shared, okay, but, and this is, what this is, is this is a tweet. Alibaba now trades at a lower price to sales multiple than Campbell's Soup, okay? Now, the news is out yesterday that you have the owners, Jack Ma, another gentleman, um, putting about $200 million into that stock. You should always pay attention when heads of companies are putting their own money into the shares. It is pretty remarkable when you look at on this concept, okay? Price to sales ratio, you go back, you were pushing, what, 24 at one point for BABA? You're down at nothing. But boy, be careful because you're dealing with high risk capital. Let's put it that way, okay? Even myself, I found on the headlines yesterday for BABA, okay? And you're up another dollar forty today. There was the pop yesterday that you got on that news, okay? That was yesterday's acceleration from about 68 to 74 by the end of the day on the news that, yeah, um, the owner's putting in 200 million. But boy, be careful, okay? And when you look at the Hang Sang, man, I finished up the program with this yesterday and I didn't get to, to spend enough time on it because it was literally rushed in the last 15 seconds of the program. Here's the Hang Sang on a 15 minute, okay? You're up again. What are we up? 3.5% right now, up 545 points. We're nearing 15,900. You've had quite an acceleration. This index is up, what, 1,000 points from where you were Monday. That's a 15-minute. We put it on the daily. And you can see the accelerations we've had off of these lows. But here's what I wanted to get to, man. You put it on a monthly. Can you find the area in that chart where the government comes in with hundreds of billions of dollars? Because they've already done it, and it's already factored into that chart. 15,900 on that chart. That's a monthly going back to... 2016, 2017. Now, you saw that tweet on BABA, and I'm jumping around to kick off the program, but just things you're thinking about a little bit big picture. China is going to be in focus right now uh, with all this stimulus they have going on. When I start seeing this coming around to just group chats, and, you know, these are friends who are investing in their own personal investments, right? They're paying attention. And yeah, you might have an opportunity at BABA longer term. But boy, that is a tough looking chart, man. And uh, we're going to jump to a couple more articles as we go through the program, talking about some fund managers that are paying the price for their wrong call on China as well. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with our man, Kevin Hanks. We haven't even got to Netflix yet. We got a lot to talk about. Stay tuned. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, 
you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 27 points right now at 49.21. You got the NASDAQ 100. We're up by 145 points. That's more than eight tenths percent in the positive. You're talking about records. Uh, everywhere in this market to talk about some of the market action. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, right here on Tiger TV, the Schwab Network with Fast Market, your host, Kevin Hinks and Tom White, the team at the Schwab Network. They do an outstanding job of breaking down these markets, and we're coming into earnings season, man, and they break down three different equities. Every program, folks, if you want to learn about options, I've learned so much myself over the years watching Kevin and the team, uh, and let's get right into it. Kevin, we got green across the board again, man. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, Netflix is just absolutely screaming this morning, up right around $50 to start the day. And that's got everyone feeling a little good about themselves this morning. So right. uh, I, I, I think when we look at the futures, what, what they're doing, remember, though, the market is going to move past Netflix pretty quickly today and look to Tesla after the bell today and IBM and LAM Research and ServiceNow. I, so th what, that's what this market does, Tommy. It'll move past. We, you know, we've got big data coming out Thursday and Friday. So, yeah, it looks like a really good open, but everyone should be a little careful here. Netflix is not the entire market. Yeah, we all can't add streaming subscriptions like they can. And my goodness, those are some big numbers, man. They got the raw on top of it yesterday morning, and it's plowing higher. But I agree. And, you know, the market, you did, well, quite a tailwind when you got numbers like that on, on a stock that's got quite a fanfare. Um, but you beat me to the question in terms of Tesla, and I'm imagining I might be reaching, but I don't think so that you guys may be talking about Tesla on the program today, Kevin. And I was just going to get maybe a little bit of a teaser Boy, you know, Elon, he is always in the press for, for good, for bad, for whatever reasons, the richest man out there. There's just so much going on with this company right now. Then you got the China story with BYD. Um, how do you look at Tesla, man, as we come into some pretty important numbers after the bell tonight? You know, Tesla has been beat up lately, Tommy, as you know, down to $209 uh, where it closed yesterday. Now, that being said, Elon Musk has to change the narrative about EVs to, sure, EVs are slowing down, but they're choosing Tesla. That's why. The other EV players are 
are, you know, in infrastructure, they all have to catch up to where Tesla is. So I think, uh, you know, this stock where it is, it's going to be fun to figure out how Elon Musk puts a positive spin on people when they choose EVs are choosing Tesla, not Ford, not uh, GM, not Stellantis. So, you know, obviously there's competition from China, but Elon Musk has to get this figured out. I think they're going to talk about a cheaper version of the car coming out or starting production. I'll talk about that. Yeah, it's you know you have to pay attention to what he says and always, always be checking on the pipeline in Tesla and what he's got going on there. As an aside to that, and I know it's not going to matter for the earnings, and it may not matter right now, even even for the company. But uh, what do you think of the whole pay package story? You have any opinion? You know, they, it's interesting. Boy, the board is in a tough spot, no matter what, in terms of Elon being out there, the numbers they talk about, um, but the the multiples that sometimes this equity delivers are pretty remarkable off the heels of that last pay, pay, pay package. You look at that at all in terms of the stock, or is that just kind of a distraction in, in your opinion? How's that? Any, any thoughts on that one? Do you mean like CEO pay packages and things like yes, that? Yes, when he's talking about out there recently that he wants to have 25% ownership in the company oh. and maybe he's talking about a new pay package of like $60 billion as a CEO um, of that company. I'm not sure if you'd seen that one. I was making some headlines. Pretty tantalizing details. Um, but boy, that last pay package, man, he delivered. The stock went up like tenfold over the period of years to deliver you know, tens of billions of dollars for the CEO. I, I, I think putting you want to give elon musk as much incentive as possible to be on site and engaged in your business and if it you know the minute the very second that he doesn't become a you know earning his money type ceo then the cries will come i i i believe in remember something when Elon Musk sold PayPal and cashed out of PayPal, right, he put basically – he could have cashed out and hedged his bets and dialed up. He put 95 percent of his net worth into Tesla. He was all in, 100 percent of his chips in the board. He is the most impressive in, in, inventor in my lifetime. And so the last thing you should do is try to control this guy or dampen his spirit. Yeah, not many people, man. You cash in for what nine figures, hundred million something. I'm I'm on an island. I got a cruise ship. I got whatever I got, man. I'm not probably putting ninety five of that back into a high risk stock like Tesla. And we know right. how close they came to BK on many times. And you know, I'm pulling it up on the Thinkorswim platform right now. Six hundred and seventy three billion dollars. It's been cut in half, which makes that conversation so much more intriguing from from their high about a couple of years ago. But if you do the type of numbers where, let's say, they, they multiply that times 10, because that's what he did on the last pay package, you're talking about almost a $7 trillion company. So then the conversation becomes a little bit easier. I just wanted to get your take. It's just interesting. Um, and Elon always provides some interesting commentary in terms of what's going on. With that in mind, we covered one of the equities I think you're talking about, Kevin. But what's going on on Fast Market at 12 today? Yeah, we're definitely going to cover Tesla. We're definitely going to cover IBM. And then we're trying to figure out, is either Lamb Research or ServiceNow? That's our final uh, one we'll look at. But certainly a big show as earnings start to pick up, Tommy. And look at IBM, man. That is a strong start to the year, strong acceleration off of last year, 173.94 for IBM. And we look forward to Tesla, Lamb Research, many others, I'm sure, as we got some earnings rocking. Kevin, I appreciate the time on a busy morning as always. Look forward to talking to you tomorrow. We'll have some GDP data on top of everything as well. Thanks so much, Kevin. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. You heard it. They're talking about three great stocks. And, uh, yeah, Tesla. Not to put Kevin on the spot on CEO packages, but it's just so interesting, right? Because if you do those types of numbers, man, you know, everybody gives them grief, but Kevin makes some great points, you know? And no matter what you feel about them, politically, personally, um, just an amazing innovator, entrepreneur. Um, he gets the jobs done, man, you know, and, and it's, it's, you know, yeah, we all know. You add on the space company, right? He has rockets, um, just remarkable. And so he catches a lot of grief, but 10 times the multiple. And if you do that, you're talking about $7 trillion. And I think if he goes to the board and he says, I want to make $100 billion if I bring this company to a $7 trillion company, I think a lot of investors are okay with that. And we'll see where we are from there, but pretty interesting. Tesla. Earnings after the bell today. 
and we jump over to the Analyze tab, and you're talking about about a $12.75 move priced in for their earnings. You jump over to the weekly options, okay, and you want exposure through Friday, and you're looking at about a $15 implied move in either direction. So that means, you know, when you see that, folks, and you see that a $15 move is about priced in, you know that right away, if you're going bullish, you got to make up half that move, right? About a $7.50 move. So if you're in the options market, and this is why, check out Fast Market, folks, okay? No matter what you're into, and, and we cover some simple option strategies. Like right now, I'm just giving you the implied move. All that really is is adding what the premium is for an at-the-money put and a call. You add them together, and you've bought exposure on both directions, and the premium is what the implied move is, which is about $15. But they, I mean, you're talking about credit spreads. You're talking about everything on the program that they do, folks. Outstanding program. And this is the time to check it out because they walk you through hypothetical trade setups. And the best way to learn is examples. And we got earnings season. So they got three trades every single program. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got markets in positive territory. And we're going to talk some Netflix when we get back as well. We got markets up 27. We'll be right TFNN back, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got stocks open. You're looking at an S&P opening at an open high, 49.22 on the S&Ps, up by just more than half a percent. NASDAQ 100, you're up by nine-tenths percent. The Dow, up by three-tenths percent. And the Russell, up by almost a full percent. We jump over to Netflix. 
9.4% to the upside. Pretty remarkable. Now, what I will say is the implied move was about $40 yesterday. So you're up about 46 bucks right now. Now, you went directionally on that. Yes, there was opportunity to be made. But if you were just buying volatility, right? If you were just paying premium for volatility in the options market, you barely made any money. And yes, you, you made money on this move, okay? But remember the types of implied moves. And this is why even understanding options as an equity trader, understanding what the pr market's pricing in is very important um, as Netflix just continues higher to 540.86 right now. We jump over to Disney shares. Whoops. Up by 1.1%. Probably a little bit of help from Netflix there, obviously. Um, but the market's in pretty positive territory. You got Disney up by 1% right now, NASDAQ 100 up by 8 tenths. Disney's just up with the Russell 2000 is another way to put it. You jump over to those Netflix numbers. Many headlines out there, of course. And interesting, they decided to go the route of WWE Raw yesterday morning and then their earnings after the bell, right? They probably knew they had too much good data in their earnings to put it all out at once. You know, there were great conversations in the den. Was this a little disguise over bad earnings? So it's interesting to remember these types of scenarios, right? Because CEOs are human beings, folks, okay? And they're all making these decisions to try and present the best opportunity for their stock to trade higher or trade lower by less on bad news, right? And so I found myself asking that same question, and I couldn't quite figure it out, but that was the answer. No, it wasn't that it was bad. It was that they had too much good news, and they didn't want to put it all out after the bell. And so they said, let's put out this good news before the bell. Market's going to love the fact that we're going into live, I bet. And they liked it, and then they gave it back, remember, right? Look at the acceleration on Netflix yesterday. You gave it all back on the open. So the market, oops, excuse me. That's the Russell. But there's yesterday's action on Netflix in terms of the WWE Raw story, up to 502, and just like that, you were back to 485, right? You opened at 495, and you gave up $10 almost in the span of about 10 minutes on Netflix. But I thought it was interesting and noteworthy to, to just remember that because it it's uh, it could have been one you figured out there. It could have been a hint to possible good news. Doesn't mean it doesn't go the other way because the question's real and sometimes they're going to try and do that. But if they had good news, maybe they saved that, right? Maybe if they missed on numbers and they were going to get into live, maybe they would have saved that because it would have helped them with the numbers. Anyway, interesting as you go forward. The numbers, pretty remarkable. 13.1 million customers is what they added to end 2023. Growth is going to quote unquote slow a bit to start the new year, the company says. But earnings, yeah, the forecast is crushing it, man. And you talk about a ginormous beat. 8.91 is what they were looking for. They come in at 13.1. Their margins went up. Uh, the forecast for earnings goes up. And forgive me. Let me find where that, because uh, I just had the earnings. I was jumping around on different stories. Yeah, so the company projects earnings per share of 449, 449 for the first quarter of this year. And the market was looking for 410. When you talk about margins, okay, margins, Netflix is focusing, and this is from a CNBC article I'm reading over here, uh, the company increased its 2024 full-year operating margin forecast to 24%, up from 22 to 23. So imagine, right, they're, they're gaining more subscribers, and every subscriber just goes right to the bottom line, folks. That's basically the deal, right? They have fixed costs, and then what happens? The variable cost for every customer they pick up is probably near zero, right? What's the extra cost? Exactly, and that's going to go to the margins, which is going to help. Uh, now, they do talk about in here that Netflix does not see ads as the primary revenue driver in 2024. Does not. It's still looking to scale that part of the business. Uh, it's going to be a big one, folks. These ad portions of streaming giants are going to become huge revenue drivers as that is the ability. I mean, look at a company like Facebook. They're nothing like each other. Okay, Facebook has billions of people. But the business model of becoming a trillion dollar company or something like that is very difficult off of a subscriber base where you're getting consumer prices. Do you know how you make that kind of money? You get corporate money in the, in the form of advertising. And that is how you dwarf what you could ever make 
And I think those companies are coming around to that, man. And I'm seeing it myself. I told the story when I signed up for Peacock to watch an NFL game. It was a no-brainer. When I signed up for Peacock, it gave me the option, six bucks a month with ads or like 12 without ads or something. Whatever it was, the six option was the no-brainer. And here I am paying $6 to be served ads, which is a remarkable business plan when you put it in that context, especially when you're going to see advertising growth, to put it lightly. All right, what else we got? Well, we got GDP tomorrow. Let's talk a little bit of GDP. This one from Bloomberg here talking about the GDP is going to showcase consumers set to power the economy in 2024. Yeah, forecasters are looking for an, a robust end to 2023. And yeah, lower inf inflation effectively acts, acting as a tax cut. That's Neil Dada out there. I like him on Bloomberg, man. Um, everybody can be right or wrong, but he's been pretty right on some of the, what's been going on here. And what they're looking for, quarterly data on GDP out tomorrow morning. Expected to show the economy expanded at 2% annual rate in the final three months, fueled by a 2.5% growth in household spending is going to be the driver there. Yeah, and the quote from Neil Dada, inflation slowing relatively quickly. Labor markets are slowing, but they're not slowing as quickly. The net effect is going to be to continue to juice real incomes. My next question would be, and he, he finishes, it's not an economy firing on all cylinders, but it's an economy of firing on enough cylinders. But if you're juicing real incomes, isn't that going to be a inflation factor, right? Consumer sentiment on the rise. Check out that. University of Michigan Consumer, Consumer Sentiment Index, 78.8 is the number. And look at where we've come from, man. You were all the way down at 50. So we get those numbers at 8.30 tomorrow. You get some expectations for 2.7% growth for the full year, 2023, up from 0.7 for 2022. We're, of course, getting the final quarter, so you factor that in. And, yeah, lingering concerns, to put it lightly, as we go forward. And we are one week out from a Fed decision today. And as we shift to that conversation, right, what do we have going on? We got yields dropping. We're at 4.09 now. 4.09. We take a look at crude real quick. Jump over the crew contract. Back above 75, right at $75 as we got our man Teddy Kegstack coming up next. We'll talk a little bit of crude, and we always have some great segments. Look at this dollar index, man. Great day to have Teddy on, as always, as we got the dollar drop on a 102.82 right now. 103.81 was the high as of yesterday. And we got markets giving up nothing, man. Let's jump back to Netflix. How are we doing on Netflix shares? Yeah, it's not stopping, man. That stock is strong. And uh, they're not stopping either. Up by 12% now, up by $60. They just gained 11 bucks since the open. They are buying Netflix. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with our man, Teddy Kegstat. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We'll get the S&Ps up by 23 points right now. And Netflix continuing to soar up by $64 now. That's 13% to the upside. Pretty remarkable. And we are going to jump to, we're going to talk some currencies. We're going to talk to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex Report right under the newsletter tab at TFNN. You head on to the newsletters, you'll see the Tiger Forex Report. You can subscribe for $97, folks. Teddy puts out updates every week on Monday, updates throughout the week when warranted. Don't forget, he's got a couple of outstanding webinars under the services tab. Whether you're talking about Japanese candlestick pattern, stock and, stock and option strategies, or capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads. Uh, and boy, we got a great day because we got some action, as always. Teddy, these Wednesdays, man, we always got some good action. We got some movement today. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, lately we do. Can you hear me okay? We had some technical difficulties there trying to get in. Yep. I got you loud and clear, man. Great. So, boy, I was jumping through. We got movement almost everywhere right now. Teddy, where do you want to kick things off in terms of, of currencies right now? Well, today we have obviously a nice move in the dollar index. And, Oof. you know, we're coming off a higher move high that we set yesterday. So, uh, you know, it's a profit taking slide. Re yields really aren't moving today, you know, so they've been in a kind of a sideways trade. Um, oil right now is hitting the upper part of that range. You know, I've been calling for 70 to $75 as being a range trade area for a while now. And I think we're just flirting with the upside part. I mean, unless we get a breakout with the, like, I would say two consecutive closes above 75 i wouldn't i'd be very cautious with you know being too bullish right now i mean i'm not bearish but i think it's probably going to consolidate back into the range somewhere around 73 74 bucks a barrel you know so but yes. we do have some uh, action in the major currency crosses some of your lesser ones are actually quiet today so whatever you want to talk about we can we can get into yeah, the dollar index is rocking, man. Maybe I mean the euro, the yen. Where do you where do you want to kick it off? I was trying, you know, I'm always looking at currencies when I got you on on Wednesdays, and and sometimes, as you've taught us, you know, it's not always just the dollar. There are certain ones driving it, but it seems like everything is moving this morning, man. In terms of the the big currencies out there, sure. um, so I don't know where you want to where you tell me where. What are you looking at most important this morning? Well, let's, let's start, start with let's start with the big dog. We'll go with the euro, U.S. dollar. Perfect. So, um, right now we're coming off a nice swing low from yesterday. Now, from the Tiger Forex report, I had a 108.34 as a nice directional pivot level. It's a big monthly number. And we kind of touched that yesterday and came off it pretty strong. And with today's action, if we get a solid close like where we're at right now or even higher, I would expect to see some follow through into tomorrow. Now, be careful with the GDP number tomorrow because if yeah. things come out that – Things start to point towards inflationary, you know, uh, point of view, if you will, with that number or if it comes out, especially um, 
out of line in a big way, well, then you could see the yields move all of a sudden. You know, if all of a sudden you start to see something that takes us off this dovish view, you know, even or even starts to point back at a little bit of potential hawkishness again, you know, for that kind of a trend, well, you could see a big move at reversal in the dollar index and then see all of a sudden, you know, all the majors fall against the U.S. dollar during that release. So I would be cautious if you're if you're long uh, pairs versus the dollar going into tomorrow's number, I would tighten up your stops and just be careful tomorrow morning for sure. Nice. And it makes sense. I mean, we got quite a week. We got GDP and that's going to drive it. And then we get the Fed a week from, mm -hmm. from today. Um, now, the pound well. is a totally different story. That Now, this is an interesting situation because the euro U.S. dollar right now is coming off a nice swing low. Overall, the, the medium term trend has been a bull for the past few months. But for the past month, it's been correcting. So, to, you know, the rally today, it's like you can't just be like, oh, great, the bulls are back. Well, you're, you're coming off a new swing low to begin with, sure. you know. So I'm not trying to call a bottom here. Once again, I've been looking for a lot of sideways, too. And we do have a potential head and shoulders with what's going on here with the uh, euro U.S. dollar. One was triggered in the pound already last week. And now with this rally, we're coming up towards that shoulder. So that could totally negate that sell signal. But once again, let's say we run out of gas where we're at today, okay? And all of a sudden, the number does come out the other way. Yields fly all of a sudden to the upside, meaning lower bond prices. Then what happens? The U.S. dollar all of a sudden catches a bid in a big way. We could take out the lows in the euro from yesterday if that happens. So then you're looking at going from where we're trading now at 109.14, going all the way back down to below 108.34. You could be a handle lower easily within a period of like, 20 minutes, a half an hour, you know, sure. that kind of a move, you know, so that kind of volatility is there. I mean, look at how much the yen has moved, moved around in the past two days, you know, so if that number is a reactionary number, I would think you're going to have some real heat in that trade too, you know, yeah. so those currencies, I would be, you know, be mindful of what's, what is coming out tomorrow, you know, like calendar releases, you know, I wouldn't say that tomorrow is a news event trade, but it is a trend, potential trend reversal you know, number where it could influence definitely some some uh, traders, especially swing traders uh, over the next 24 to 48 hours, you know. So but there's some good plays, you know. I mean, the one nice thing is that if let's say the number comes out as forecasted and it comes out nice, dollar stays soft. Well, then, you know, you're, you're seeing a nice rally in the pound, the euro and also U.S. dollar yen. You could see a nice sell off there then, you know. So that would be something that we could really see with that you know as far as how the trade thing has been trading today i'd be careful you looking at the dollar or dollar weakness today as like oh you know everyone's bearish dollar well okay well but on a daily basis you can't look at that you know you have to look at where the overall trend is and look at what you're trading right now and we have to be careful over the next 24 hours with that Nice. I know. We get a lot of data tomorrow morning in terms of what's going to drive and pretty interesting that you get a Fed meeting six days following it when it's going to be some pretty important data. And um, that's another thing course. too, Tommy. As we get closer to the Fed meeting, we could go, we could stay in this uh, sideways trade. Like we may not get a breakout at all. What happens if we have a dead number tomorrow? Let's say, I mean, right now it's, it's markets are just open a little bit. But let's say we pretty much have had the move of the day. If that happens and we start to just settle into a quiet trade the rest of the session, <clears throat> if tomorrow becomes a non-event, well, then you're looking at Thursday in front of Fed week next week. We're going to go flatline. You know, yeah. so then you're looking at going side. I mean, be careful. Look at the bonds and the tenure. They've been basically going sideways. It's up one day, down the next. You know, it's not like there's any major yeah. moves, you know, and even in the FX crosses, like when we first started the conversation, I said it's the majors that are moving today, not so much the lesser ones, you know. So um, and we have to be, you know, as traders, be mindful of that you know, for the market conditions, you know, so and I, I and we, this Fed meeting, I would think, I don't know, don't you think it's a pretty crucial meeting as to what they I, do or don't do? I would agree, man. I can't wait to hear the words in terms of where the market is, um, mm -hmm. what the Fed has been saying, and, and all the talk, of course, about uh, March, which mm -hmm. which is, is coming down the line, as we know, pretty quickly. I mean, it's tough. Um, it's not like last week where I came out guns blazing with all kinds of trades for you. You know, I mean, every day isn't like that in the market, sure. especially – with market conditions, you have to plan yeah. ahead, like pay attention to the calendar. These are not necessarily news event driven trades that are going to happen, but it is going to control how the market conditions are to a degree. 
No, it's awesome, man, because it's real world. I mean, that's the deal. Tomorrow morning, we get a ton of data. Yeah, unless you want to really risk some huge moves like you're talking about. Um, and I agree. I mean, the yen, I, I was pulling up the charts, Teddy, when you were talking about just mammoth moves over a two-day period. Um, and that's ahead of some pretty important data. Right. Teddy, I appreciate it as always, man, and I got to love it. When next time we talk to you, it's going to be Fed Day next week. So have a great week. That's right. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. All right, you man. You too, Tommy. Take care. Thanks so much. Folks, check it out. The Tiger Forex Report right under the newsletter tab. And check out those webinars he's done. Outstanding webinars under the services tab as well. We'll be right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps holding on to gains, but giving up some of them. We were as high as 49.24 pre-market. We almost hit that price level on the open. We're back a bit. Still positive by 20 points, up by four tenths percent. NASDAQ 100, we're up by three quarters percent right now. Dow giving it up a bit, up only one tenth percent. The Russell gives it up as well, up about four tenths percent. This has a pretty big moves. Even when we're talking to Teddy there, you had the dollar index jump from 102.77 back to 103. That's how the gold contract pulled back from 2035 to 2026. Slight move in yields, but nothing too dramatic there. There's your 15 minute though. Look at these moves. Yeah, what do we? We just had something going on there, man. That's for sure. Look at that move you're getting on the 10 year right now. You just dropped from 111.18 to 111.10 like that. We're bouncing a bit, um, but boy, you're seeing some action right now. 
And as our man Basil Chapman says, who's coming up next with the Tigers, they is young. We jump around to Netflix shares. It's not stopping, man. 13.5% to the upside. You're talking about a company right now that is valued at, come on, $245 billion. Not bad, man. Would they just make a billion dollars in 90 days? Not bad at all. We jump around to some of the other FANG stocks. Apple shares are flat this morning. FANG, magnificent seven. What's the term now, right? Microsoft, they add 402. 402, all-time high for Microsoft shares. Google shares up a percent and a half. How about Meta? How about Meta? Let's finish it up with Meta. You talk about an acceleration. Mr. Zuckerberg up by 1.7%. And you talk about a reversal, folks. You get it all back. You go from 380 down to 80 back to 390 in the span of just over two years. Pretty remarkable, man, uh, that company, MetaShares. And we'll finish it up, why not, with Tesla. Tesla earnings after the bell today, 208.70. You're backing off a bit. We got positive markets, and we got selling in Tesla. Watch out, baby. Tesla, down about 40 pennies, uh, two-tenths percent, but you just gave up almost $4 on the open. Folks, thanks so much for starting your trading day right here at TFNN. Stay tuned. We got a man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Great program, as always, I'm sure. And I'll see you back here tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow we're getting GDP data. You heard some great commentary from Teddy that segment. Important data tomorrow. Markets in positive territory. New highs across the board. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's coming up. Have a great Wednesday.